All right, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a special treat. Because the weather is changing, it's getting to be fall. For me, that means time for chili. Welcome back to the Farm Cook channel. This is the place where you get to eat well, have fun, and hopefully learn lots, especially about low carb and keto cooking. So now let's get ready and make some dinner. All right, so today is chili day and uh, this is really uh, an, unusual, an unusual recipe. It's one that has evolved over time. Um, I got a sort of a master level course in the art of making chili through my involvement in Troop 615 in Ellicott City, Maryland. Shout out uh, Dr. Alberni, otherwise known as Dr. Flavor on YouTube, follow his channel. Um, uh, because when Dr. Flavor was with the same troop, that I was in, he would make the chili for every, well, big outing uh, or for chili competitions. And we won just about every chili competition that we ever entered with a variety of different um, influences on those different chilies. So um, this is sort of a medley of all of the above. So what's involved? A lot of uh, meat. Um, because I'm trying to do this in a keto way, this is a very protein forward chili. There are no beans. And I know people get triggered by the idea of beans or no beans in chili. This is not gonna have any, but it does have veg. I've got a couple of large onions diced. I've got four uh, different color peppers uh, chopped up. I'm not a big fan of the green pepper. So those are red, yellow, and uh, orange. Um, I've got three pounds of 80-20 ground beef. We've got uh, two pounds of um, fatty that has been seasoned and smoked and cut up into pieces, in addition to another pound or so of uh, a pork loin that was a recipe I tried yesterday, and the leftovers are gonna be going into the chili. That's one of the great things about chili. You can hide a bunch of stuff in there. So that recipe did not work out exactly as I wanted to, but stay tuned because it's going to be on the channel once I get it uh, fine tuned. So the process is really simple. We're going to cook up the ground beef, drain off some of the uh, fat and uh, moisture that's going to come out, and then we're going to start adding other stuff. So let's get started. Let's go. We've got the pan heating up. We got the 80-20 uh, ground beef going in. All we're going to do, cook that down, render out a bunch of the uh, fat. Um, not till it's completely done because we have a lot of cooking to go, but we're just going to get out the, uh, the majority of the uh, grease and uh, water that's in the beef. Just going to break this guy up into little pieces and get him cooking. So this is the point that I was trying to get to. It's most of the way done. The ground beef is most of the way cooked. And a bunch of the grease and water has been drained off. Not 100%. We want to leave a little bit in there um, because now we're going to be adding the veg. So get the fire back going and drop in the onions. This is three large onions. Happen to be two red and one yellow, but that's just what I happen to have. Let's get those guys going. And the onion is going to release some of their moisture. It's going to combine with whatever little bits happen to be stuck to the bottom of the pan. Release that and it'll serve as uh, additional flavor. So we're going to let these guys cook a little bit longer uh, or, or, or get going, start the process of uh, breaking down the onion, um, getting that flavor to be released into the pan. One of the awesome things about chili is all the flavors are coming together. Everything's um, becoming uh, a, an integrated whole 
And that process continues. You're just developing layers and layers of flavor as you go and adding texture and adding what ultimately becomes chili. And chili is one of those dishes that, uh, while it's really good the first day, it gets even better when you let it sit for a day. So that's the process. I'm just going to let these guys go for a little bit and then we'll start adding the rest of uh, the rest of the ingredients. So it's been about five minutes since uh, we last chatted and the onions are starting to lose some of their color. The ground beef is, um, is fully cooked now, no longer pink and um, things are progressing. So the next step in the process, I've got, I don't know, pound and a half of a uh, London broil. Um, love adding steak to uh, chili to again, provide that texture difference rather than just the ground beef or just the ground sausage uh, texture together. So I'm gonna add that chopped up London broil. Get that going as well. And those are, those are just bite-sized pieces that um, when you actually get to the final uh, product, those bites are gonna be gold, absolute gold. Really, really love it. Get those guys started browning with everything else. Bring out their flavor, and they're gonna have a chance to stew once we add the rest of the ingredients. Wanted to get them going now. And then create a little bit of a, a well in the bottom of the pan. The pan's getting a little bit full, so it's not so easy to do right now. Drop in a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, avocado oil. And here's 10 cloves of garlic that have been squished going in. Can't get those guys in. So what we want to do is get a little bit of color on those guys and then mix them around. Everybody in the pool. Saute those, uh, those little bits of garlic as much as we can. And because they're squished, they're so finely, uh, they're so, the pieces are so fine, uh, it won't take long for them to get a, a fair amount of flavor out. I'll just flip those guys, getting the, the other side going. Leave that for another, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, and then get everything moving together. So let's get integrated. And this smells amazing already. I mean, how can you go wrong with beef, beef, onion, and garlic? Not bad. So I'm trying to get everybody uh, everybody mixed in. Next step in the process, peppers. Add some nice color, again, additional texture. It's gonna be quite tasty. Looking beautiful. Next step, we've got tomatoes. This is uh, some diced tomato. It's gonna be a total of two 28 ounce cans. Wow. 
uh, handles are getting a little hot. I had the heat turned up a little too high. But uh, the tomatoes are going to not only provide a lot of really wonderful depth of flavor, they're also providing some uh, moisture that's going to help um, as we start to simmer the pieces and get everybody working together. So eventually what's going to happen is this is just going to be left to cook for, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes and everything will have a chance to really sort of come together. Um, this is a 24 ounce bottle of Passata, which is a, a, a tomato, it's not really a sauce, it's really, I think it's just um, ground uh, peeled tomatoes. It's quite tasty. This happens to be the Cento brand. I've had, uh, I've tried others and they've, they've all worked very, very nicely. But this is gonna provide that moisture that we need to allow everything to integrate. Trying to get everything off the bottom, everything on stock, everybody mixed in well together. And we're just gonna let this go. Oh, forgot the most important part. The thing that really makes chili chili um, is the addition of the seasonings. And so we've got a, quite a mixture here. We've got a mixture of um, cumin and coriander, urfa beeper, pepper, regular old salt, a little bit of uh, uh, complete seasoning. We've got um, some smoked uh, ancho chili. We've got some, uh, trying to remember what kind of chili that is, chili powder, and uh, a little bit of cinnamon. I'll include all of the specifics in the uh, recipe. That's at the end of the, uh, that's end of the in, at the end of the cook. So everybody goes in the pool. And so right now we've got um, the three pound container of ground beef that's been cooked down. We've got uh, about a pound and a half of London broil, a couple of peppers, four peppers, a couple of onions, three onions, and we've got some more protein to add. I'm going to do that a little bit later. Got a couple of cans of um, tomatoes and the passata. And this is getting to be chilly. I'm going to let this stuff come up to temperature and then I'm going to add uh, the, uh, the rest of the protein and hope that I have room. It's been about 10 minutes that the chili has been bubbling away. Been uh, cleaning up and stirring occasionally just making sure nothing is sticking on the bottom and it's it's just coming together nicely. Um, I did a quick test for seasoning and we're heading in the right direction. I'm gonna do wait for the final adjustment after I add this seasoned protein. Um, this is uh, These are very heavily seasoned uh, proteins. It's the sausage that is uh, seasoned with a uh, commercial rub and the, um, uh, the pork uh, was something that um, I'll tell you more about later, but it's got a lot of seasoning as well. So let's get these guys into the mix, if there's room. So unfortunately, one of the other, um, in addition to picking up uh, some of the um, techniques from Dr. Flavor, uh, Dr. Arborny, uh I also picked up his penchant for making way too much food. So I'm the only one in the house that'll eat this. So I think uh, there's going to be some um, family and some neighbors that are going to be on the receiving end of uh, the post uh, chili process. I don't remember exactly how large this, uh, this pot is, but 
it's pretty substantial. It's at least eight quarts and it's pretty full. So now turn down the temperature a bit and we let this just sort of bubble away slowly. Let everybody come together. Some of the uh, seasoning from the sausage is going to come out. Um, some of the seasoning from the, the pork is going to come out. Um, and the other seasonings that were added are just going to have a chance to sort of blend together and eventually um, form, hopefully, a happy symphony. We'll find out. All right, it's been maybe an hour since uh, we last chatted. Had an maybe a little longer. Had an opportunity to uh, uh, keep this on the fire for a, a bit. Um, make sure that everything is being moved periodically. Nothing sticking to the bottom. Um, the contain the the pot was getting kind of full, so I had to uh, I had to do my part to help decrease the volume. So I had some of this for lunch. It's quite tasty, and but I wanted to wait until. Um, a bit of time had passed before doing the final seasoning test. This is this is exactly what I was looking for, the sort of consistency. You can see that there's tomato, you can see that there's pepper, you can see that there's different kinds of meat in here. So let me uh, scoop out a bit, give you a little bit closer look. So that's what uh, the final product is looking like. It's wicked hot. But we've got a little piece of that London broil, some of the, uh, some of the pork, the ground beef, the uh, sausage, the peppers, and that yummy, very beautifully seasoned sauce, man. Should be really tasty. Quite flavorful. Interesting mix with the different kinds of peppers. Um, and the cumin and the coriander. Mm. This is going to be spectacular. It's already super yummy. But I think uh, once the chili has a chance to sit for a bit, cool off, hang out in the fridge for uh, for a day or two, I think the flavors are really going to shine. Then, my gosh, very very tasty. Mm. The different proteins provide a very different texture than just the ground beef. Not that there's anything wrong with just ground beef chili, but if you have the chance to uh, to add those different proteins. Can really up the uh, up your uh, chili game quite a bit. Peppers are still very tasty. They they haven't gotten mushy. Mmm, just really yummy. So, chili season. Um, there's going to be a recipe at the um, at the recipe cards at the end of this video. Give it a shot. It's delicious. Thanks. <music>